everybody, we are here with the Brothers Murph Top 10 here on Board Game Geek. Yeah! We're doing our own little Top 10 here. We're gonna do a Top 10 that uh, we we kind of we think about these things a lot, and I feel like this is a conversation that happens a lot, and that is yeah. underused themes. What themes do not have enough games about them, uh, and we have... we Because we don't need up. any more Cthulhu. No, We don't plenty. need any more zombies there's, or there's Vikings. There's so much good stuff or... already. We just don't. We, we just need so many more. And there's there's been something that's been proved the last couple of years that different themes, themes that maybe different don't have sell. as many games, are are pretty yeah. pretty interesting to people. So we uh, have each ten suggestions this time. We have uh, two separate lists because there's that many themes we want to talk yeah. about. Uh, games that maybe have some themes about them, but we just don't feel like are have enough or don't have like a really big splashy game. Yeah, there like, may be a couple of these, yeah. and there may be a situation where we come we say a theme, and we you're like, seen it. brothers, there's like fifty games of this. Put, Put those, it down in the comments below because we obviously don't know about them. We're clearly looking. So yeah, there might be really good games. We're trying to find these games, but like yes. as far as us, we're concerned, there's not very many games, but maybe we're yeah. wrong. And please let us know. Please let us know. And down in the comments, of course, put down themes that you would like to see. Yeah, exactly. And we haven't shared each other's list, so I'm very curious of what's going to be on yours mm. because like, I wonder if we're going to have any crossover. I'm, I'm, because we have similar tastes in yeah, general. I'll, and I'll so, bet there's a couple. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. We'll see. Indeed. Uh, but let's go ahead and jump into uh, our number 10s. Number 10, to be fair, does have some games about it, but I want to see more, and I just need to play them more. I want to see more games that make use of, like, alchemy, specifically. Okay. So, like, because alchemy, there's, like, the alchemists and uh, Trees Magistus and stuff yeah. recently that, that kind of dabble in this. And yeah. I think it's super cool because alchemy is a super interesting thing. It is. In that it's based in reality. In reality, like, but you can take forever. it to such a fantastical level. Yeah, people you know? forever have been like, how do I make gold out of different stuff? Yeah. Like, I'm going to try to, like, transmute metals and things. I think it's really interesting. So I would love to see more games... Uh, especially like the alchemist exists, but from what I understand, it's pretty heavy. Yeah. So I'm like, I want a good like in Trees Magistus is pretty heavy. I want a nice into that thing, but that's not necessarily straight up uh, potion explosion level. Yeah. Uh, magical, just something where it's like, I don't know what I'm looking well, for. Well, I feel like this games, is a, alchemy is just such a cool thing. And I think that this is a theme that you could do a lot with in terms of like because whenever I think of like what themes could work, I was trying to think of games that like mechanically would work with it and stuff yeah. like that. And this is a game that you could do a whole bunch of different kinds sure. of mechanics. You could be deck builders, worker placement, whatever, you know, it's like you feel like you could do a lot of different stuff yeah. with that theme. It's just an interesting theme because it's where science and magic sort of like blend, kind of blend together, together yeah. a little bit. Where like real life science folk like want to make sort of magical things happen. I'm trying to make Taco Bell out of gold. That's what I'm saying. How do we do that? You yeah. Know? Because I don't know. Taco Bell is gold. If anyone does know, please let us know in the comments. So below. that's my number 10. It's like, again, it's a 10 because like there are some games yeah, that I, honestly, have me, but I want, I want, um, I don't think there's anything on my list where there's zero one. games. Yeah, of that. I want a yeah. different one with alchemy or something, but alchemy is just super fascinating to me. Yeah. I think there's more to explore there. I think so too. I think it's a really cool, fun theme that's kind of sciencey, but yeah. kind of not. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a perfect mix between science and magic. You put it perfectly. Yeah. That's, that's a perfect way of putting it. What is it. your number 10? My number 10 is dogs. Now, here's the thing. I love Get dogs. You. I also love cats. And there there's are so a many cat games. ton of games about cats. There's Isle of Cats. Fair. There's Cat Lady. There's Cat there's Cafe. Cat Cafe. There's so many. There's Calico. Exploding Kits. There's Calico. There's so many games about cats and no games about dogs. None. And any game you can do with cats, I feel like you could do with dogs. dogs. Look at dogs. We have dogs. Well, you have dogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a dog uncle. But yeah. nonetheless, it's like I feel like there should be so many more games about dogs. And I love cats. Like I, I, at, my, at my apartment, we have two cats. I love those cats. But it's like there's so many games about cats and like... I can think of one game, I think it came out like years ago called Agility, and that's the mm. only game I can think of that's about dogs, but you could do so much stuff with it, because it could be about like having a dog. It could be about, like, I think Agility is about like dog training and like Which dog would competitions. Be super cool. I it could be that. a whole game about dog shows, Yeah. you know, and you're just like trying to show your dog, and, and you know, it, it could be like weird political and all this. It's like, it could be so much stuff <laughs> with dogs, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? But there's no games about dogs, and a billion games about cats. It's, it's a disparity is... It's not right. And I, and I, again, Especially because dogs are so much better. I do like dogs better. I like cats a lot, but it's like, I just, I just don't get the, the difference to those I two know. of like the two most popular domesticated pets, dogs and cats. It, it, there it's are like literally this. so many more games that have cows in them. Another domestic animal. <laughs> so many cows, so few dogs. 
You, well, you need to play Scaverna because you got both. You got you got yeah. cattle and dogs. And, and donkeys. It's a bunch of whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. But nonetheless, I want to see more games about dogs. I'm into that. At least to the level of the amount of games there are about cats because yeah. there's just so many. And I they're all great. I like the game about cats, but I just like, just give me some more dog games. I like dogs. I'm into that. Yeah. So dogs are great. That's my number 10. Dogs, alchemy, same theme, basically. Basically. So, where science and magic blend. <laughs> it's a dog. Exactly. Oh, God, they're so beautiful. Um, nonetheless, let's go ahead and get into our number nines. All right, we'll get into my number nine now. My number nine is, is, I don't know. It's like kind of loosely related to another theme and that's kind of like city building. I want to have a game, more games about architecture. Okay. Specifically like design? Archite like design. It okay. could be, that's, uh, my whole thing is like, uh, hmm. most of the games I pick, I feel like there could be a bunch of different games. There could be a game about, like your board is like a skyscraper or like a, or like a big high rise condo or something like that and you're trying to develop it and trying to build the right stuff to score the mm. most points. Kind of like if you took Dream Home, which is one of the few games I can yeah. think about where you're like designing a house, but, but Dream Home is a very, very fun, Incredibly very pretty, but light. very light game. Yeah. I want a bigger, heavier game about architecture, but then it also could be about like designing some like um, some like Frank Geary type stuff who designed like the Guggenheim and like yeah. the Disney Concert Hall. It could be more about like the designer aspect of it and designing these kind of like crazy cre weird buildings or it could be like just kind of like a like city builder like effici function. efficiency like putting stuff next to stuff like a tile placement game where putting stuff next to stuff makes a difference. Like if you're going to have in this building, you have condo, 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 but then there's a couple businesses up here, and maybe they're putting a conference room here will score you extra points because it's next to the businesses. And then you put it, and it's like, I don't know exactly what, but I just want more games about architecture. And the architecture could be a whole bunch of different stuff. It could be like landscaping. It could be like designing a specific building. It could be about designing just one block. And again, it kind of starts bleeding into city building at that point. There's a sure. lot of city building We're kind games. of going, focusing in on... Yeah, like let, let, let's zoom in a little bit and go into architecture because I think just it, a game's about like designing a cool home, kind of like dream home, but bigger, heavier, could be really cool. And there's just not very many games about that. And I, I like think it that. could be cool. I like that. I, I would almost like one where you get to you design a mall. Yeah, exactly. Like what things are next Anything. to each other matter. It could be a the business. Food court? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Where's the, where are you putting hot topics? If you put a Trader Joe's on the bottom level of your skyscraper, you get like 10 victory points. Yeah, obviously. Because everyone wants a Trader Joe's exactly. on the bottom of their skyscraper. Yeah. yeah. I think that's really cool. That's super interesting. Uh, I like that a lot. Yeah. My number nine, uh, what would be really sweet in your um, skyscraper is if at the top you had a garden, and my game could be about tending that garden. Okay. Now, so gar garden. gardening is a theme... That appears a lot. Yes. Uh, you have things like herbaceous and stuff. Succulent you now. Nah, there's there's more know. stuff about gardening. There's games out there that deal with gardening, but I want one that gets into, like, maybe it's a heavier experience of, like, actually tending a garden and building out. Like, maybe you have uh, four plots. You can put, uh -huh. like, four planter boxes, and, like, the way that you plant those things in the way that you maybe start off, but you have to play a certain amount of actions to like water, but you can get things built up where you have like, you can get an irrigation system, which makes you more efficient and mm -hmm. stuff. This is kind of a theme that's You basically want Stardew Valley. I basically want Stardew Valley. Uh -huh. In a game where it's about tending a garden, and like maybe you can put you know flowers in to attract uh, bees and stuff, which will give you some sort of bonus because you can pollinate that. So it's like, I need to have some flowers over here, but I want to have these things over here. And, and then you can have like insects come in they have to deal with yeah, like weeds some or something like that. Things, yeah. yeah, it's like, I don't know like what it would be. Like maybe it's like a, you can have those four plots and it's you put down cards and stuff and like things will make cards move, shift around, change, mm -hmm. get rid of, stuff like that. Like I don't know what exactly the game would be, mm -hmm. but I think it'd be really interesting where it's not just like, oh, there's pretty art, with yeah. flowers but on it's it, ultimately an abstract great. game. Ultimately kind of an abstract. Yeah. You can just see the mechanics of it. I just want like one where it's like, you're, you're kind of are tending a garden and what goes where and stuff and what kind of soil you have and how you kind of spend your funds and energy, you know, as resources to get different types of soil, which maybe you can maximize yeah, yeah. this type of, of uh, totally. herb. Or, I think That's my thing, so many of these games, it's like, yeah, you can get you can get deep in there, where it's sure. like getting this kind of soil, you know, da-da-da, makes it, your victory points go up here, but there's a drawback. It's like, you can yeah. get so, you can make a heavy game out of any of these themes, you know? Yeah. And like, you know, gardening, maybe that's like a little too heavy for something that's supposed to be so zen, but like, but not necessarily. I want something where I can like zen be zen and crut and crunch out on something like at the same time. Yeah, I think it'd be really interesting. I because I, I personally like themes that are light and kind of zen and and airy themes, if you will. 
but are they cover heavy, a heavy, game. heavy a game. That's why I like I love Dungeon Pets so much because it's got this really cutesy, silly little theme on top of a pretty heavy game. Yeah, and it's like that to me is such a fun and that cutesy that that light theme keeps me going more in a heavy game. So yeah. I don't mind a heavy game with a kind of light theme. I think it'd be a great way to go about making like a slightly heavier game. Mm -hmm. It'd be super interesting, but you're still tending a garden. I just think like there's games that are like close to what I'm thinking of, but like I I want I want a, something crunchier. Yeah. Yeah. So sure. anyway, that's my number nine is tending a garden. Um, but in a different way than the games that exist. Those games are great. We have we have a handful of them. Yeah. I love gardening. And I feel like gardening has become more. more of a theme recently. Yeah, so maybe great. in a year, this that this entry might be like, oh, cool, we got it. You yeah, know? which crossed. I hope so. Yeah, right. Like, Fingers I hope crossed. this list is irrelevant in five years. Yeah, people are like, those, all those games are like, you guys like, well, are well, yeah, idiots, we're and we're happy. like, we know we're here no. based off of looks. Yeah, purely. And with that, we'll get into our number eight. I think we'll be, okay, Nick, are there any games set in France? None. None. Until now. What I want, number eight, specifically, is a co-op fun experience about the Three Musketeers. Oh, it's like, about, about the France? Three Musketeers. Are there any Three Musketeers? I'm sure there's a Three Musketeers. There's gotta be a Three Musketeers game out there. That would be awesome. The thing that made me think about this was like hmm, the Ninja Turtles awesome. game, um, where you, you can play as different turtles and you're working together. It'd be awesome to play as the Three or Four Musketeers, really. D'Artagnan! And, <laughs> and, and Aramis and Porthos. We get some D'Artagnans down in the chat, down in the, down <laughs> the comments. <laughs> if, you, if you know that specific uh, <laughs> hailing of D'Artagnan, which version of Three Musketeers, you had a great childhood, just saying. Um, but I think it would be really interesting to like, you have like a good villain in Cardinal Richelieu and stuff, and you could have, mm -hmm. I feel like this good um, one versus all good game idea. or something, or, mm. or just a co-op against like a hard AI. And the Three Musketeers all have, I would lean into the Disney version stuff where Porthos is sort of a pirate. He has like maybe musket pistols or something. Yeah, they, they each are pretty asymmetric in how they can do stuff and maybe attributes they have. So you really have to work together. I think the Three Musketeers would be cool. I could see some like rad minis with those cloaks and stuff and paint them up. Three yeah. Musketeers oh yeah, you could, really definitely, you could definitely get some sweet minis out yeah. of it. I don't know. That's all I got. It's just Three Musketeers. I think it would be interesting. That's fair. I like that. Three yeah. Musketeers. That's a good, that's a good... Rethink that Ninja Turtle game to Three Musketeers. And that's the thing, like, it, especially when you're dealing with, I guess that's an IP, essentially, at this point. Um, it's it's like, the good thing is, domain, it's like, you so. could do, well, I mean, yeah, that's the, it's, it's an IP that's public, I guess it's not an intellectual property, it's a public domain at this point. <laughs> been oh, been that way for a while, yeah. I gotta assume. But it's like, yeah, it's like, you could do that with tons of games. Look at how many games there, how many Star Wars games there are. I mean, it's just like, yeah. Yeah, I think it'd be you cool. You could do that forever. It's my number eight. Interesting, okay, my number eight is um, kind of a weird one, and that's life. And I mean specifically like people's lives. There are no games about life. There is the game of life. Sure. Which is terrible. And then there's like the pursuit of happiness. Sure. Which is kind of like a Euro game version of the pursuit of, of the game of life. Yeah. But there's no other games about life. And I think life, because there's so much to life. You can have it where it's like your entire life, kind of like the, uh, the pursuit of happiness or the game of life type thing where it's your whole life. You're trying to live it in different ways or whatever. But then you can even get deeper and just go into like specific parts of life, like like you know your, your college days or or you know your twenties or your thirties. You, there's so many because your life changes so much. It could, I mean, it could get it could get even serious if you're like dealing with a crisis, or you know it could make it could be a cool game about like mental health or something like that and dealing with things like that. It could be like there's so many cool things about life and life is so varied and so deep yeah. that I'm just surprised there's not more games. And I feel like it's a it's a, a theme that's tough to do well and it's probably intimidating when you could just slap Cthulhu on something like but I would love to see more cool games about life and about living and maybe about like relationships about you know this and that and it's mm. like and you could have it be big like your whole life or it could be kind of a microcosm where it goes smaller and it's just you're living your best year it's the mm. best year you can Ooh, you know, like your best year. Just try to try to try balance. To have the most rad year. Yeah, the most. It, it could be just straight fun. Yeah. You're just just doing the crazy stuff, or it's a game where you're having to like manage, like work with fun or whatever. And maybe that's a little too real for for most of us. You know, <laughs> I think people are seeking escapism with their. But games. nonetheless, yeah, yes. like I, I think it's I think it could be a really cool thing. You have so many. Again, my, my thought process for this is like, how many different types of games could you make with this theme? And with this one, I feel like because life is so weird and big and crazy and varied and fun but also similar like i think you could make so many different games in this kind of theme and there's just 
None, other than the game of life and the pursuit of happiness. It's the I, only ones I can think of. I think you do a like um, seventh continent level, like <laughs> sized game, and you go through starting at maybe like ten childhood, some point in childhood, through the end, and it's kind of a campaign. It's a one through, and there's Ooh. different points where there's diverging storylines. Yeah, you make big decisions in life, and once you do this, you you this this part of the tree gone. You don't have access to that anymore, and you just make this path and you take it through to the end and you see how your life turned out almost just like the point is just like just to see what the story is mm, that's interesting and then rewind like it and go down a different path later and stuff I'm I like, like that would be intense that man. would be intense you can get some you can get some, some stories that's what I'm saying you can have real right? stuff happen there, yeah. it could be it could be interesting ooh, that's, ooh, that's, that's, that's uh, yeah that's, 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 that's a lot yeah it's yeah. intimidating I thought I was like that's, that's interesting cool. yeah alright so that's what number eight is life you know just people's lives all Living you them, need you know um, all right, so let's go ahead and get our number sevens. All right, my next one's a little bit lighter than just life, and that is holidays. I yes. want more, and, and here's the thing. I understand they'll only get- about they'll, Christmas games. They'll, they'll, there's a couple, that's in Christmas, there's a couple. I feel like there's a couple Halloween games, let's be honest, there's probably a-, a but, but not There's not, probably a crappy game for every holiday. Not like spooky, but like about the holiday? Both. Honestly, okay. I, I, it, it, this one is kind of this one is kind of higher on my list because it's like, it's kind of vague. Let's be honest, but it's like I love like we have Gingerbread House, which I consider a holiday themed game because Gingerbread Houses are mostly holiday. made around wintertime, yes. Christmas, Hanukkah, the different the hol the winter holidays. And we play, we'll play it throughout the year. We'll play it a couple times, but nonetheless, when the ho when the winter comes, Once December comes, it would the be amount hard. we start playing Gingerbread House, and I love it because to me it feels yeah. themed towards the holidays, and I want more holiday themed games. I would like a game about Halloween where the board is a neighborhood. You're trying to collect as much candy as possible. <laughs> and here's the thing, we'll probably only play that game in October, but I like want a cool it. Area I want a game, game around the 4th of July where you're trying to throw the most banger block party you possibly can. That's pretty cool. And it ends at a firework display and whoever's as biggest I would make my wins. whole my whole thing would just be grills everywhere. Yeah, exactly, you know. Burgers. It's like have a heavy euro That's, game about uh... throwing a fat block party. And then on top of that, really it's like, cool. but then on top of that, like, I, we're obviously American. And so, like, I was say, that but like, great in France. <laughs> exactly, right? But then, like, branch out. I would love to have games themed around other countries, other cultures, Big other religions, time. holidays, because I find other cultures, holidays fascinating because I'm just like, oh, that's interesting. It, it, during this time of year, this is what you do, this is what you celebrate. But then on top of that, people in those countries could then play those games around the holidays. Because again, cool. uh, our holidays are completely different than even like Canada. Like, let's have a Boxing Day holiday. Canada every year gets together to celebrate the most storied boxers of their country. They all get out in boxes and beat the crap out of each other <laughs> in the street. So like, why can't we have a game about that? That'd be a great game. <laughs> a great game. But it's like every country is gonna have its own. <laughs> It's going to have its That's own, great. I love that. you know, every game, every country, every culture, every religion will have their own holidays. And as long as it's not disrespectful to make a game about it, it'd be so cool. Because, and I just, and I understand that like, we'll only probably play it around that holiday, but I love getting into the holidays, whatever holiday it is. And I would love to have a game for each one. There's plenty Flag of other day. games on our shelf that we only play once or twice a year anyway. So what's might the difference? Might as well. And if it's great. You might get more games played because you're like, it's near Easter. We gotta, we gotta yeah. play the weird bunny game. You yeah, know, it's like, it. but it's like, I would love more games based around holidays both like American and everyone else's holidays. Cause I think also That'd it'd be, be fascinating so cool. to play some games about holidays in India, you know, or whatever. It's, I think yeah. it'd be cool, you know? Like a Diwali game? Yeah, it'd be awesome. Something like that. Again, if it was dealt with appropriately. Yeah, of course, of like course, right? Celebrated culture instead of appropriating that But I think it'd be cool. Know? Like, that'd be really neat. Yeah, I'd love to see it. It'd be a great way to learn. Uh, for me, similarly, I have um, Fantastical Domestication. I want to see more games What's that, mean? that are set in a fantasy world, but are very, like, normal Just live at home. Day. <laughs> yes. I love it. Every time there is one, I love it. I like it. that. You talked about Dungeon Pets earlier. We're just running a pet store in a fantastical world. And what does that look like? That's fascinating to me. There's Bargain Quest, where it's just like, I'm trying to put together a really cool mythical shop. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Ex Libris. I'm going to run a library with Monster But books. for some reason, yes. it's, missed. it's I magical. I want a game for every type of business <laughs> that would ever exist in a fantastical Cobbler. world. Cobbler. I yeah. want basically Onward, the Pixar movie, in a game. That's fair. But it's like sort of like, what are we doing in the neighborhood? Like, I think it's so fun. That's a good idea. Like, rather than have a normal store, have a monster store. Yeah. I want I, more fantastical, but I'm not necessarily slaying monsters. I'm just like a peddler. I'm just selling stuff. That's <laughs> all I want. 
It's great to me. I love that idea. That's a good, <sighs> that's a total, you're so right. You know what I mean? I just think like, and there are, there are, again, there are games that, that exist. But I think, I think you're, it's not enough for me. I think you're right. I think the mundane stuff, like that's what I want to see. I think it's, it's like, hilarious. It's like, why is this game set in fantasy world? You're like, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> like literally, actually, because you're just running Talk about a library. Talking about Smash Up Team of the Year. Fantasy and architecture. Yes. Build a crazy witch's hut. Yes, dude. That would be amazing. And right? work for Halloween. Exactly. <laughs> we have all of our things. We're coming together, fam. Basically, We're coming together. We can make one game <laughs> with all 20 of these things. all these things in there. <laughs> you know, and it'd be great. That's a good idea. No, I, I think I think you're I think you're you're bang on about it. I think that's you're be so, so right. Fun. Well, my thing is we talked about the, we were talking about this in our last uh, ten vs ten with Steph too. It's like if you're gonna especially if it's a pace on theme, at least pace on something fun and weird. Make it like might as well. It'll get yeah. more people to look at your game anyway. Yes. So just pace on something weird. There's so much like, opportunity for cool art that way. Uh, yeah, just for art alone because it's gonna be more fun to paint like gnomes than it is people yes. so it's like screw it go for it right i just want yeah the secret life of gnomes give me that game i don't care what they do i like that just it domesticated just, fantasy it'd be so fun oh. that's a great idea that's such a good idea it'd be great anyway <laughs> that's my number seven that is our number seven so let's go ahead and jump into board game or rather our number six. Oh, oh it's on we're missing time. top tens oh <laughs> Fantastical stuff. You know what I want to see? Industrial factories. I want to see a logging company. I want to make a factory. You have always liked these. This kind of thing. I want to theme. make a factory. I want to, and I want to get again, like the gardening. I want to get into the nits and grits. Yeah. I want to build something and make it efficient. I want to be all about efficiency. I want to make a game about building the machines that build stuff. Yes. It's like to me how it's made. The most interesting part of how it's made. It's like it's this. It's this machine that perfectly weaves together a chain link fence. But I'm like, I want to know is, who made that how machine. Did that get made? <laughs> exactly. I want a game where it's all about getting those machines in place to be building basically like a workflow. But you're that's I, incredibly I was gonna say, efficient. Yeah, you could be like, you put it here, and then this can flow into this, and yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think what you do is you create another element where you have to also keep people happy. You can you could fully automate. That's great. But morale and all that in the tank. And how do you manage a workforce <laughs> and stuff? And how do you keep as many people hired and happy as you can? So, because we can talk about in real life, like there's a big problem with automation. It's it's a, an amazing tool we have, but sometimes people get left high and dry due to yeah. automation. So, how do you like, how do you deal with that? We make you want to make something as efficient as you can, but also keep people happy. Yeah, I think it'd be a good problem to tackle because I think it's a very realistic problem to tackle. <laughs> yeah, but the idea of like get a machine, then get a cooler version of that machine so you can do this stuff with less. Maybe you uh, your energy in the round is time. You only yeah. have an eight hour work day, so you have to like get you can stretch your day further. I think it would be so interesting. Yeah, I like make that. it about logging specifically because <laughs> I just, just want a game about logging. We went to like a logging thing once, and you see the, the, there's logs in the water yeah. sitting there waiting to get milled and whatnot. I thought yeah. that was a very impactful no, you're not. day. <laughs> what? I just want to see a logging company. You have to make a logging factory better than the other people's logging factory. I think it would be amazing. That's fair. That's fair. And you have to seed the forest and stuff. You got to keep the environment and people happy. Yeah. No, it's all that's about totally fair. Synergy and workflow. Doing this doing in a this. logging factory. That's what I want. That's my number six. <laughs> I like heavy industry. Okay, I'm down. I'm down. Um, all right, my number six is uh, this is kind of a weird one, but this is like meta games, games about gaming, hmm, and this could okay. be a whole bunch of different stuff. This could be a game. Of, my my go-to example for this always is role player. The game role player. Yes. Because role okay. player is a board game about rolling out like a character for like D&D. &D. That's what it is. And it's like a dice allocation game and you're trying to make the right stats you can. Yeah. But literally, it's like this weird meta game Because you're like that also works. sort of in a fantasy world, but you're, it's... But not really. It's like, it, yeah. it should not work, but it does. It does. And it's so cool. And I've always thought like, this is such a weird, nerdy meta game game that works so well. And I want more games based on it. I want a game about designing a board game and like there are benefits and drawbacks to putting in certain mechanics or making the game as big or the player count changes stuff like like sure making it two to six will probably make it sell better but it's gonna hurt your game because most games aren't two to six let's be honest and so it's like like there's so many different things you could do but then you also have a game about trying to be the best like dungeon master possible hmm. you know where it's like it's it's you're just you're trying to prep prepare as much trying to build a story and then the very very end game like the final showdown is you like 
do I don't know, you know, but it's like it, I'm trying there's so many different parts of gaming. You have a game about mini painting. I don't know what it would be, but it's like yeah. you're trying to collect colors, you're trying to collect miniatures, you're trying to put in the practice to make a cool display mini for like for like Crystal Dragon or something like that, you know, like a big mini painting convention um and competition. It was like there can be so many different parts of board gaming that feel like you can have a game about board game collecting. Yeah. Like you're to get... trying to collect as you many set, board, games. board games as yeah, like, yeah, exactly. Or like... take a look at McMillennium Blades. Is a board game about collectible card games. And it works. And it's weird. Yeah, and it shouldn't true. work, that's but it true. does. And I want more that's games about games. And I want to get deeper into games. <laughs> and I want to become the games. Man. And I want to be looking like, I'm a game. I'm inside <laughs> a game. I am playing a game inside of game. <laughs> you know? And game it's just like, and then game. I want to be able to play the game that I make in the game. And then I can play yeah. that game. It's you. No, but that's, I, I, do, I yes. think... I like I like movies that are about the movie industry big time. I like that kind of stuff and I want more games about games cuz I think it works surprisingly well and it's yeah. super weird and super meta and I just like it. I just want more. That's plenty good enough. I yeah. think that's great. Yeah, I think uh, there's 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 already been some good stuff. There's more to mine I think with that yeah. one. Yeah. Uh speaking of more to mine, we have a whole other half of this list. So it's going to jump into our number 5. Okay, my number five, yeah. again, it's also kind of weird because this isn't like a, this isn't really a theme, I get. Okay, I'll just explain. My theme is other perspectives. And what, what I mean by that is is a game from the other side. Okay. Okay. My example is Spirit Island. Yes. Spirit okay. Island is a game where normally games are about, hey, I found this new I island, let's go, let's go populate this island. But Spirit Island, you are the islands, and you don't want people populating your islands. You're constantly trying to drive them away. Yeah. I find that so fascinating. And I think that's such a cool, fun take on a theme that I think a lot of themes, you could probably do that. Same with like ghosts. Like you could, I mean, I, I think there are games where you are the ones haunted, but it's like you could have a game where you're ghost fighting treasure, you're, you're trying to, you know, find some ghosts and like, you know, ghost busters and stuff like that. Or you'd be the ones where you're being the ghost and you're yeah, trying to, yeah, they do have, like, you can have a game where you're a monster rampaging the city, but you also have a game where you are a civilian in that city trying to not get stomped by this monster. So I, I want more games from like the other side. That'd be fun specifically how the, 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 the town villagers are like, I've got a pitchfork and a torch. We'll see how we do. Yeah, exactly. I it's no like, no skills. I want more games from the other side of the coin. Sure. And I don't, I don't have too many examples. It, it, it's, it's hard to me to verbalize what I'm talking about. But like, I Listen. love the idea of like Spirit Island. Like, it's just, it's this kind of similar game, but from the other perspective. Yeah. And I think that's so interesting. And I feel like you could do that with a lot of different games. Big time. You know, instead of instead of having, you know, Bear and Park, you're you're making a, a, a bear zoo. Instead, you're the bears. You're trying to get out of the zoo, you know, or something like that. Just all these different things Some that you could security systems. Yeah, you know, you're like just just switching it up a little bit, you okay. know, and just and just taking like okay, this is kind of an interesting theme. What would it, what would this game be like from the other perspective? Yeah, you know, because there's always two sides to every story in that way, you know, and stuff like that. And it's it's I think it's an interesting way to deal with theme that could make your game more interesting, make you think about mechanics more interestingly, and all kind of stuff. And so I don't have like a, it's kind of a weird entry, but like other perspectives, I yep. guess, is the flip, other way. Flipping the script on Yeah, flipping the script. That's really what right. it is. I like that. My number five is about, you mentioned, uh, you like movies about movies and games about that. Uh, I want more games about TV and movies. Yes, about, I almost put this on my list. About the industry, about making like, being behind the camera essentially. Yeah. So the game that we always reference is the networks. The networks is about running your own TV studio and it's amazing. How is it the only one? How is it the only one? Yeah. That like has has been a big hit. Yeah, yeah. It's like so what I know about. Like so I've talked we talked with a friend of ours about this a lot who uh, sort of dabbles in designing games and likes to play around with these things. Um and he's a he's a cinephile as well. Um and talking about like um making a movie or running a studio and you only have a certain amount of funds and stuff, so do you get like the best possible actors and stuff or do you try to do these things and do you, what types of films yeah. do you try to make? Are you trying to, to build on soundstage or are you trying to go location? Trying to go location. You know? How do you allocate these funds and stuff to hope to get a big box office return on mm -hmm. those things? And you could play a few rounds where you do, you know, a couple different projects. I think that could be incredibly fascinating yeah. to find out where do you like... Where do you, what, you, where you cut cutting? the budget, where you, where cutting? you cutting to save yeah. to still hopefully make your money to try to, you know, d buy up a popular IP? Yeah. That costs a ton of cash. Tons. You know, you do that, like, there's so much 
interesting, I think, decisions to be made in a game like mm -hmm. that and try to see what your ROI is. Yeah. Um, I think that could be so interesting because yeah. the network proves it's so fun. You're trying to get all these so viewers good. by putting the right shows in the right time slots. When do you cancel shows? When do you bring new stuff in? Do you attach stars that cost a lot of money? I mean, basically, the network does all these things. I just want another one. Yeah. Make it about Hollywood at large. Yeah. You know, and like get into. You can into... go bigger or you can go smaller. Yeah, I think it's just. Uh, you can it's... make one about a specific scene in a movie. Sure. You know, again, I that's why I, I love these things because you can go big, but you can go small as well. Yeah. You know, and that, it's just like, because you'd be playing out dialogue. It's, and again, it's just like, all these different ways, like playing this could make you get more points rather yeah. than doing it. But it's like, yeah. It's just, yeah, it's just, I think, infinitely fascinating. Uh, Hollywood, granted, we live in LA, so we uh, have a, a more of an yeah. obsession and focus on <laughs> yeah. Hollywood than most. But I think it'll be re very interesting because it's a weird, interesting industry. Yeah. So I'd like to see more about that. Uh, and that is our number fives, everybody. So let's go and jump into number four, like you did. My number four is about art making. Make it art. More games where you make art. And I would especially like it if the game, while you're playing it, you end up making art. You make something pretty somehow, some way, with cards or whatever, but you end up with something artistic in front of you. Hmm. So there are a couple games. More recently, art's been popping up. Like one thing I think is really useful is simply color. Yeah. Color is colorful. It's amazing. It's vibrant and stuff. And you can put together really... Uh, striking looking stuff by leaning into color and making it about color. So we have like a game like Colors of Paris. It's like kind of a lighter game. Uh, you're sort of running a paint studio and you're trying to recreate famous real paintings um, by putting just different color things down. You're sort of putting um, cards down with these colors to match yeah. what's on the back. Sort of f f contract fulfillment in a way. And it's interesting, but it's not enough for me. It's not, it doesn't, I don't feel artistic while playing it. Um, you know, so yeah. it's, it's okay. It's just mechanical, yeah. It's mechanical and stuff. Um, so I want... More games about being an artist, making art, whatever yeah. that means. Um, there's a game um, coming out soon uh, called Canvas. Yeah. Where you're putting together these like transparent cards that have some bits of art on them. And you put together three of them to make a set that actually creates an art piece based on that. I it think is that cool. is brilliant. I'm like, yes, you get to create art in a way. Yeah. You don't have to be artistic to do no, it. Because yeah, yeah. you can just make stuff match together. And you're just thinking of kind of set collection stuff. But like you end up with a cool looking display in front yeah. of you. And I'm like, yes, I really want that game. And I want more of those games where you somehow get to be artistic in your way yeah. um, without needing to go to art school, which can feel intimidating if you had to actually draw and draw well or whatever that means. Uh, rather have something where you just end up feeling artistic. Yeah, I want more of that because I think there's so much you can create such vibrant games. You can explore you know? so infinitely, yeah. Yes, and so I'm like, yes, like how do we how do we get more of that kind of stuff? I just want more games about art making and games that specifically make art. Yeah, that's fair. I, I totally agree, 100% agree. Uh, there's, number four. there's a couple more coming out, but we, we need more. We just need more. more. We need more. My number four um, is uh, weather. Specifically weather. I think weather... So like a meteorologist game? I don't know. Predicting the weather? Well, no, 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 no. That's, but, but any kind of weather. So, it could, again, it could be a whole bunch of different stuff. My only example I can really think of is Petrichor. Petrichor is a game about weather. weather where you are clouds and you are raindrops and you're essentially trying to get your colored drops of rain onto different crops and essentially kind of an area majority kind of way. And, but you are clouds and, and Petrichor deals with weather in that way. But then on top of that, I just find weather to be fascinating because there's so much different type of weather. Yeah. But it could be a whole bunch of stuff. There could be games where you are the weather, where you're like a tornado and you're just trying to destroy as much po stuff as possible. Ooh, like a whole asymmetric game? Yeah, you could have it. Yeah, you could even have like a like a one-on-one -on -one game where like one person is like a, a, a type of weather and the other person is like trying to stop it or something like that. You could have a game where you're a, a tornado hunter. And you're going out, and you're trying Hell to yeah. you're trying to you're trying to try to be Twister the movie, and you're essentially trying to get the best Great. shots of of like the tornadoes without getting too close and dying or something like that. You know, you could have some deduction elements based on like the weather. There's a high yeah, like is it gonna be an, is it gonna be an F five? Yeah, you know, or is it gonna be an F three? You know, it's like depending on where like which way to go. Like you have a couple different things mm. that could be happening, and you're like ah. Oh, this one could be like an F4, but this one could be like an F2. It's like, oh, I'm going to go over here. It turns out this like one was that. better. You know, you can have that. You can have it like a big co-op game where you know there's some kind of impending weather disaster. There's a big hurricane coming. you got to prepare the town. 
and you've got to get ready and you've got to work together to try to prepare the town for this big hurricane. And that might be too close to home for some people who deal with it. We live in LA. So until the big earthquake happens, we don't really deal with much weather. They made aftershock, so we're good. Yeah, they made aftershock, I guess is a good point. So we're yeah. make one about that now. So it's like, to me, there's so much stuff you could do with, yeah. you could have it be like global, Just where you're, you're like literally a globe and Ooh. you're putting weather in different spots and even trying to manage like planet yeah, saying, being like, like you can't be cool. like you have to have rain snow and earthquake and a tsunami happen today whatever you know and it's like you have to figure out where's the best place to put these things to limit the amount of damage and to keep the planet going you maintain homeostasis yeah like how do you make how do you biodome this how do you maintain homeostasis hmm. With, again, there's just, there's so much different stuff you could do with weather, and I find weather to be fascinating, and I think it's a kind of abstract theme that you could really make a lot of games about, and I think it could be super, super cool, and Petrichor is the only one I can think of that really has to do with weather, where you, like, are the weather, or weather is, like, the main theme. I love and that. And so, yeah, I don't know. Weather, yeah, natural stuff. Twister, Twister the game. Twister yeah, the game that's all I good. want, really. Oh, that's awesome. I Boom. love that. That's our number fours, everybody. Let's go ahead and jump into number three. All right, my number three is, this one actually kind of kind of ties into weather in a lot of ways, and that is, I'm, I'm, I put it down here as other sciences. And I mm -hmm. guess I realized, I'm like, well, there's not very many games about science anyway. There's like Genius Games who makes games about science. Yeah. And those tend to be about like life science. Well, actually, yeah. they have a periodic and stuff. But I want games about sciences and, and different types of sciences. Like a game about like alchemy. Ca specifically and only. Specifically and only alchemy, yeah. But because originally when I was making my list, I had like three different science. And I was like, I should just lump this all together into one. So that's what this is. But you can have a game about like geology. You know, where you're like trying to make the coolest rock collection. Or maybe like you're trying to read... How, you're trying to figure out how old rocks are, or you know, there's mm. so many different things you can do with that, or like astronomy. So real science. Not like a space game, but like a game about astronomy, where you're like studying far off planets, or like astrobiology, where you're like trying to find life on other planets, and yes. like the game, it's like a race to try and find life, and then try to get it back home to study it. Could be like a racing game you could like do. That. There's a whole bunch you could do stuff like a marine biology game. And there yes. are games that I are, want a game about the deep sea. Like down the bottom of the Mariner's Trench? Yes, what's down there. We know more about space than we know about the deepest parts sure. of the ocean, bro. I want to see one where you explore exactly. in submarines and it's like a space exploration game, but on Earth. Yeah. Well. Exactly, like exactly. So, so yeah, exactly. Something like marine biology where you're like really getting into like the sciencey part of it. That'd be awesome. I mean, going to like microbiology, I don't care. Going to botany, going to like, and not even just about gardening, but about like the science. I want more games based in science because I think it's a fun, one, it's a convenient way to learn more. That's one thing I like about genius games is you really do learn a lot. Yeah, the problem, in my opinion, with genius games is they're a little too sciencey to the point where they're, they're sometimes hard to understand because everything in, in those games is very, very accurate. Yeah. And sometimes you're like, you have to move this to the Golgi apparatus and cytosis. Yeah, and I'm that? like, I like, don't know what any of these words yellow mean. Yellow area. Like, oh, okay, just say yellow area. Yeah, yeah. yellow area is fine. Yeah. Um, but nonetheless, I want more games based in science and different types of science where the, the cool. science and the scientists are the game. Not yeah. like, ah, oh, we're in space. Like, we're astronauts. Like, no, no. I wanted about trying to just live in a space station, you know, just just something with science, you know. That's interesting. I like that a lot. Yeah, that's super cool. Uh, you touched on the water. I want to have more games on the water. I don't necessarily want to get into the science. Water world IP. I, oh yes, more be, IP. Basically, yes, that'd be awesome because I want uh, more games um, that you could define as a swashbuckler. Mm. I want games this close. Spot that number are eleven. High seas fun. Yeah. Um, there's a Sea of Legends uh, coming out at some point that seems like it's maybe kind of close to this where I just want a game where you're sort of on the seas, a pirate adventure that really has a good time. Yeah. Really leans into the I would fun like, like, a, of, like a swashbuckling movie. I would love like a Seventh Continent type game. Yeah. Where you're like really exploring, choose your own the adventure type. Problem, you just gotta, you just gotta hack and slash and stuff and you're fighting skeletons and whatnot. Yeah, or pirates what? almost made mine. Cause there's and more pirate like treasure. Games. I want yeah. games where you can find treasure. You come, Dude, across, how, a, you come across a cave oh, and you gotta like go you in make and it, You make it a, uh, a, like a legacy game, you actually get to open up a treasure box. Well there's, there's sea components for the game. was kind of, nah crap, it's not fun. That's the point, I want the fun. I Fun. Bright and colorful. I don't want dark blue. I want like very bright. No, I totally agree. Sky blue water, beautiful Pirates of the Caribbean, and like. Yeah. I totally because I almost put pirates, and I think I didn't because there's some more pirate game. And I feel like pirates is gonna be 
a more there's, common there's theme. There's definitely pirate games, but there's not but very many. To be fun, fun no, fun. I totally agree. I totally agree. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 hundred percent agree. It's probably my number eleven. Like I, it just, I really want more pirate games. But again, fun pirates. Fun. Like I like Rum and Bones because it's more that kind of just fun swashbuckly, you know, yeah. roll and dice. So and I wasn't like that where like you kind of get to move around and it's kind of more of an adventure. Yeah, that one's cool because it's like ship versus ship. Battle. Yeah, yeah, totally. Super cool. Again, but that's like, the kind of that's a smaller. Ver- yeah. That's a that's a. Microscope looking Blow in, yeah, no. exactly. Yeah. So anyway, God makes seven continents, but exploring the sea, the and you got to find caves, and you go into them, and oh, oh that'd be so fun, so fun, dude. Yeah, you can mm-hmm. do stuff like riskily and save some like action points or something. But you got to roll more dice, you know, like, get some cursed treasure do... or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God, it'd be so yeah. fun. Make it somebody. I'm, I'm, I'm more named Seed Legends is exactly that, but like just it might be, it might be fun pirate adventure. Yeah, I totally agree. Hundred yes. percent agree. That's our number threes, everybody. Going number two. Yeah. You know what I want, man? Taco Bell. Yeah. Taco Bell. Games about Taco Bell. More games about Taco Bell. I want alternate history games. I want to start in history, and then I want to go to Abraham Lincoln uh, Vampire Hunter. <laughs> Like, I want games like that, where okay. you start somewhere in history, and then you just go straight sci-fi. <laughs> you go, whoop, or you go like the Watchmen, you know? It's like an alternate version of history. Yeah. I want stuff like that, where it's kind of set in the real world, but it's bizarro real world, or there's supernatural elements. It's one thing I love, like, my favorite uh, book series is the Dresden Files. Yeah. It's a, it takes place in our real world. Dresden is a is a wizard, private investigator who lives in modern day Chicago yeah. and he's super poor and his life is horrible and, and he gets great. beat up all the time. Yeah. But it takes place in the world we know. Yeah. Okay. But it's not the normal world. So I want I want alternate histories. Make games about this period in history and then add in something spooky. Interesting. Yes, I think it'd be so interesting. Well it's like that book series I like the Temeraire series where it's yes. like, it's set in it's set in the Napoleon. Napoleonic Wars. But every country has an air force, and the air force is dragons. But other than that, that it's like awesome. a Napoleonic War book series. Make that game exactly. I'm like, that's so great. Yeah, that's so cool. A little Napoleon on a giant dragon. That's amazing. That's yeah. all I want. I just want alternate histories, weird mixes of things where it's there's some familiar, and then it just gets gets buck wild. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, I, I that. totally agree. I want more of that. I do love. If there's that. a game that that deals in that, please put in the comments below because I am looking. <laughs> I am actively looking. want alternate history games. Um, okay, my uh, number uh, two is uh, kind of nerdy, but that is books slash libraries. I can only mm-hmm. think of one game that has to do with like libraries, and that's Ex Libris. Mike yeah, brought it up amazing. earlier. It's fantastic. And it's fantastic, but I think books in libraries, it just seems like such a, na- we're all such nerds. Like, it seems like such a natural. In libraries, everything's about making everything nice We like and organizing stuff. Yeah, it's just, it, it, it's, it seems kind of, like kind of a boring theme, especially compared to like that or like pirates and stuff. But it's like, that's legitimately what I, I want more games about that because there's so many different things, again, you could do with it. it about books, it could be about book collecting. Libraries could be about you know, organizing a library, trying to collect the best books ever for the library and like having these kind of rare books is better than these ones. Or it could be about writing a book and it could be about like writing a novel and again, kind of like what the things you're choosing to put in there have benefits, drawbacks. You can like, Hmm. depending on what kind of book it is, like if it's a fantasy book, it's gonna do better with like this demographic versus like a romance novel, like a YA novel or something like that. Like trying to figure out again, like, min-maxing, like what's the best, what's going to give me the most amount of viewers while pleasing the most amount of viewers and da da da. Hmm. And trying to, I, I just think that like, I, I don't know, I don't know how to describe it. I can't really think of how many, what kind of games I would really like for. I just know There's that I love there. the theme of Ex Libra so, so much. And I just wish there was more games about that kind of stuff. Like Dewey Decimal needs to be in more Need games. Needs some love. Needs some games. And I just think, like, books and libraries and trying to, I mean, it could be, like, I mean, gosh, you can even, like, slap it onto, like, an adventure game where you're, like, globe trotting and you're just trying to find rare books, you know, or whatever. Cool. And just, like... Indiana Jones with it. Yeah, you know, you're just, you're just, you're Rachel Wise and the Mummy <sighs> if, the, if the rest of the Mummy stuff didn't happen. Yes. You know, you're just a cool librarian rolling around, just, like, you just, it. you know, it's, like, I don't know. I just, I, I it's, it's a theme that I think is, is, weirdly underused and shouldn't be. So yeah, so kind of a boring entry, but I I, I, I don't know, I want more games about books and libraries. I think hey, it's because we like to read it's and the, I just think it's, it's interesting. The, it's the theme you want to see more, that's totally valid. Why not? 
Yeah. It's okay. It's whatever, too. Your opinions count, too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we do have one more uh, each coming up, though, that's higher than books and or alternate history or alternate Indeed. history books. So let's go ahead and jump to our number ones. All right. My number one, I've talked about this a bunch of times, and I want more, and I'm still going to be tooting this horn until I get it. I want more games about music. Yeah. I want more games there about music. There have been more recently, which is There's nice. been a couple, but like there, how are there not more games about music? And again, it can be anything. It could be about making the most banger record collection. It could be a game where you are trying to compose a symphony. You know, there are. It could be a game where you're trying to That's be the, the hottest out, DJ yeah. in Miami. I don't <laughs> care. I just want more. It's you like, have to keep hype levels up to a certain amount. Yeah, you, like, dude, you got to down and take them up by playing cards. It's a tableau builder, but it's just building up hype. Yeah, you know, it's awesome. like. It's like any because again, you can go big where you're trying to be the biggest band in the world, and you're trying to like. Tour the world. You start off like small tours, doing like little venues, but then as you grow, you're starting to do bigger and bigger venues, and eventually you're doing like you know you're doing Madison Square Garden. You know you're doing all these giant venues. You could you could do it like that where you're a band starting like at the that. bare bottom, you know, just like practicing in your garage and you suck, and then you just like get to the point where you get to the stardom, you know, and you have yeah. to try and get there. Or you can go all the way down where you're just trying to put notes on a sheet and you're trying to arrange them in the best spot where you're you're just making one song and you end up with hot cross buns. And yeah, you and I play it. Yeah. I want a game that gets into the life and times of Chumbawamba. There you go. Exactly. That's all I want. You can be a manager trying to manage a bunch of bands, and they're all just wild and crazy, and you're just trying to keep them happy. <laughs> and just spin <laughs> PR. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, it's like there's so many. Again, it's like there's so many different things you could do with That's music. True. It's such a massive thing, and everyone loves music at least to some degree. And so it's like you could just do so much with it that you can go so big and you can go so small. And I just think. I don't know. I just don't get how there's so few games based on music considering music. I think more than anything else in the world is something that like everyone enjoys to some degree. Yeah. Like maybe you're someone out there who like hates every kind of music, but I doubt that person exists. Like every single kind of music, like music, I feel like, and that's one of the reasons why like musicians are so huge in the world. I think it's because like music is the one thing that everyone can agree music on. Music is a, is a language of the soul. Like, yeah. It, it taps everyone into agrees stuff that we don't even That music understand. is cool. Yeah. It may not be the same kind of music, yeah. but we all agree that music as a whole is pretty dope. And it's like, it's, so it's one of the things I don't understand how there's not more games about the yeah. one thing in the world that I really think everyone agrees on. Yeah. You know, that's, that's a, that's a good point. It's a universal language. Yeah, how's there I just don't. How there no, there's none. Yeah. There's a couple, but there's. I want to try so the, the symphony game. Yeah, by Beethoven, I think uh, that sounds really cool. Yeah, I think that might be so something cool. that's up our alley. We need to give that one a go. Yeah, um, that's really great. Yeah, more games about music. Uh, I want uh, more games about another uh, area that's underrepresented. I want more games about Native American culture and lore mm. specifically. I think that would be so fascinating. Yeah. Um, there's things like Wendake, which is really cool. And it gets into, not into, um, it stays away from, like, cowboys and Indians. Yeah, I yeah. don't want to get into that stuff. I want to get into, like, no, there's groups of people, and, like, this is how they lived. And especially dealing with their stories. Mm -hmm. Their, you know, f fantasies and things that are uh, that come out of their culture, I think would be so interesting yeah. to get into a game and shed light on, like, these really interesting um you know, tales that have been passed down and yeah, stayed alive. Wonderful, cool stories through time. You know, we've heard many. There's a lot of stuff that deals with like Norse mythology. We have lots of games and, and TV and stuff that deal with that, and it's fantastic. I want to see something different. Yeah, there's probably amazing, cool stories that we don't know about. Maybe you could learn about. And you kind of touched on earlier about um, other cultures' holidays yeah. and things like that. Like, there's so much to learn. I think about um, other cultures' stories and yeah. stuff. You know, and the cool thing is, is like these are people you know, that live right here at home. You know, yeah. they were here before we got here. You yeah. know what I mean? And and to celebrate and learn about these cultures and um, especially have people from these cultures provide yeah, uh, input course. on the game and help shape everything. So it really is about and from these different yeah, people. Yeah, it's different. Yeah. Yeah, so that's something that I would love uh, just to, to hear other people's stories and stuff. You know, we've heard plenty of Viking tales I'm and I'm super down with that. I want to hear. There's so many more interesting stories out there that I want to hear. I want yeah. to understand more types of people. Well, and I and I, I hope that this is something that's going to happen because I mean, like, 
like most games to this day still come out of, you know, the U.S., you know, and then Europe, you know. Yes. So it's like it makes sense that that's mostly what we've heard about in terms of theme. Sure. But it is nice. It's like, you know, you always hear about you go to S and there's so many other you know, there's, there's like a there's designers. like a big publisher from like Indonesia coming out, and I'm like, yeah. cool. That's like, let's have a, like stories about like that. Let's have games about that. Like, I, I'm so excited about the future for board gaming because now, it's it what was was primarily you know at least what it seems like kind of in this one little bubble. And now it's starting to really spread, yes, and it's, it's so, so cool because we're gonna start getting all of those different perspectives, all of those different. Just like, hey, this is a huge deal in our area of the world that I have no idea about. Like, that's so cool. And you made a game about it? That's rad. It's kind yeah. of, again, it's like the holidays thing. I'm like, that's cool. I had no idea about this holiday. Yeah. This is so cool. And now I get to learn about it and experience it to some degree through a game. And yeah. it's just like, you're right. And it's just, it can be done so well and so easily and can be really bring everyone together more, you know? Yeah, and I think that's like, I think that's exactly what we're getting to. Like with this whole, we want different themes. Um, there's so many different themes out there, but there's so many more yet to be discovered oh, yeah. and popularized. Uh, just, and I think the way to do that is by having, you know, board games have kind of gone more and more worldwide recently. And so now we need designers from all these places mm -hmm. to tell their stories, to bring their ideas and their perspectives yeah two games and like it's just gonna make the hobby so much better yeah it's gonna be cool oh and so much more varied like i'm i'm very like with you i'm full of optimism about the future oh yeah of this hobby like our hobby is great but it it's gonna keep getting better and better I'm so and better. I know. about that. Yeah. So thank you, folks, for joining yeah. us in this list. Uh, we hope that some of our picks or some of our little <laughs> brainstorms about games resonated with you. Let us know themes that you would like to see more of. If there's a theme we are talking about and you actually have a game that you know of that really fits what we are talking about, well, please put that in the comments yes. below. Let us know. We're always trying to learn about new types of games. Um, yeah. Put themes that you want to see in your top tens and also. Put in uh, the comments a top 10 you'd like to see us tackle. Yeah. We're happy to, to uh, give a go on any topic we think we could make a list out of. Because uh, we're going to be doing more of these on board Game Geek. Yes, Are we missing indeed. anything? I don't think so. Thanks so much for joining us. Once again, we're the Brothers Murph. Uh, thank you for joining us for our Board Game Geek Top 10. Indeed. We will see you next time. Bye.